good morning and welcome to Total Education Centre's production of the Shipping News Characters. Today I'm going to talk to you about the characters in the Shipping News and this is the third and final of our videos. It certainly will be the final one that's gone on a little bit long as, I, as you probably think at this stage but we really do need to get through these characters and show how each one relates specifically and directly to the topic which is lo local and global and integrating with the global. Now, I don't want you to choose all these characters to talk about, and certainly you won't talk about all of them, you won't have time in your essay. So I've gone through each of the characters and I want you to specifically choose the ones that suit you so that your essay is very specific in its responses. So for example, if you want to talk about the impact of the global on the local. You could look at Turk Card and his, his views on oil and Bill Pretty's, Billy Pretty's use of um, views on oil and, and talk about the two contrasts between those and form some sort of middle ground and see how each of those characters interacts with that global in that way. So that would be one example that you could take out and use in your essay. Depending on what you're talking about, what specifics and what you want to prove and what examples you want to use. So remember, we're not talking, well, I'm talking about all the characters. I certainly don't want you to talk about all the characters. So let's start. You remember in our last lecture, we got up to Jack Buggett. Well, I want to talk about Dennis today. Dennis is his son, of course. And Dennis is the local carpenter who really wants to be a fisherman, but his father won't let him because of what happened in their family past. And this sort of relates back to that sense of family and community that I talked to you about in the themes section and is in the themes notes and the lecture on our website. He becomes Coyle's friend and, and they're very, they become very close and the families become very close and Wavy becomes close to Beatty and Sunshine and Bunny certainly want to be part of that family. And they're certainly worried when he suggests that they could go away to Toronto and I'll talk about that in a moment. Dennis is, has a sort of pragmatic view of the world in many ways and he knows that um, his life centres around his family um, despite losing his brother at sea and some problems with Jack because of that as I mentioned. In the end he decides that while he loves life on Newfoundland and they don't really want to leave, he finds it very hard to make a living there and has to think about taking his family to Toronto. And you'll see that response and the reaction to that on page 344 of the text I have. And he's a very good example of interacting with the global gives you options. And that's one option he can consider. It might be an option he wants to take and it certainly might not be an option that he thinks is best for his family, but certainly the new globalised world does provide those options. And if you think about an example such as the EU where they've taken away borders and, and people are free to move between countries and, and work in different environments, that's a sort of um, initiative that is a positive one that you might like to mention in your essay and think about some of the positives of, of what the global has to offer as well as the negatives and because a lot of people focus just on globalisation and all its negatives and say, oh, how it's terrible. And that's really not the approach that we want to take in this module and certainly not the approach we want to take for our essays. We need a more balanced and sensible approach to it than that sort of one-sided narrow view. He does think about moving and, and it is because of economics and certainly that there has been some impact of Newfoundland joining Canada with those, you know, the economic situation there and uh, certainly we covered that with Jack and in the, in the lecture notes but it's more about for Dennis happiness and stability and in the end I think they decide not to go. It would be my suggestion. Um, it doesn't really say that much in the text but he does get to be able to go fishing at the end and I think that's going to be an important thing and that will keep them on Newfoundland and keep them happy. All right, we'll move on. Let's talk about Billy Pretty. Billy is an old Islander, an old Islander family and he's very conservative in his views of change. His family's been there a long time and he's really all about family and he does the home news page in the local paper. He tells Coyle about Coyle's family history on the way to Gay's Island. And he talks about how he is linked to the island and the sense of community they had before they were moved off. And it's very interesting to read that chapter about the impact of the global on specific families and about specific ways of life. 
And, he, and that chapter gives you lots of very good examples, and that's the Gaze Island chapter when they go out to the island. But I'd just like to read you one brief quote about his link to the island and how he sees it, because it draws us back to that sense of community that we were talking about previously. This quote's on page 175, and he says, he's talking to Coyle on the island, and he's talking about the five families that live there. And he says, boy, they was kind, good people. And the likes of them are gone now. Now it's every man for himself and woman too. Now while that's a reasonably negative view of what sort of globalisation has done and the effect that he sees on it, that is one very specific point of view and it certainly is a point of view that is reasonable and reasoned. And this comes in direct contrast and I've mentioned before that I'll talk about Turk Card as well at this particular time. Turk Card is nearly the opposite, well he's the opposite of Billy and he's set up as, as a pro-oil person. Now Turt runs the newspaper and we see one incident where he has conflict with Coyle and Coyle actually stands up for himself and, and that's a good example if you're looking at character, how Coyle develops as he goes because when he writes the article about no one puts a painting of an oil tanker on their wall, Turt card changes that and He's very pro-oil and we see that on page 211 if you want to look up that quote. And when he changes Coyle's article and Coyle stands up to him, that's, that is an excellent example of what's him. But more importantly for us now in our section, we need to look at what his arguments are and how he argues those things. And he is very pro-oil, he has shares and eventually he does go off, he heads off and works for an oil company and Coyle gets his job. I think it's important that you look at the arguments that are based in those and I've outlined that argument very carefully in the themes in, in your lecture notes that are available on the website. And that argument sums up both sides of the pro and anti sort of global movement argument and I think Prue does that very well and very sensibly there although they both are extremes, I think that those extremes are fairly well represented in society. Nutbeam is another character that, that we can link to the global very clearly and he literally does navigate the global and ends up being shipwrecked, if you like, on Newfoundland. Um, Bofield is an interesting character and he's, his boat founders, and that's on page 61 if you need to look that up, he's trying to sail around the world and his job at the newspaper is to plagiarise articles from around the world and, and make them relevant to Newfoundland and he does that very well. He plans to leave but unfortunately the yacht he has created is destroyed in a drunken party and he's unable to go and he ends up flying out to Brazil. His dream of being um, able to sail around the world and explore exciting and new places and, and, and see new things is a very recent and very global thing. I mean if we look back to Billy Pretty's story on Gay's Island and we see how the boys from England, the orphans from England were brought out and, and the dangers and the, the terrible effort they had to make to actually get out um, and it was a big adventure in those days to travel whereas now it's a very different thing and you are able to jump on a plane and be across the other side of the world in 24 hours without, with relative safety. And I think that's another aspect that you need to think of when we talk about Nutbeam, we talk about how the world has come to us in so many ways with the new digital age and how acceptance and adaptation of that is very important. And I've talked before in the, the lectures notes on the thing about change and adaptability being a real key to this topic. And when you're looking at individual and community responses to the impact of the global, and how they navigate their way through it. I think you'll find that adaptation and change are very important as long as they keep that sense of community and individuality and in what's about them. The, the, the characters that are successful seem to be able to navigate the global while re retaining their identity and their own culture. And I think that's very clear in this book and it's, it's certainly clear in um, the other text and one of the other texts in this topic, Island. Well, we're getting near the end now of our character rundown, but I have to talk about Diddy Shovel, not only because he's got such a fantastic name, but he's a very interesting character and he does have great impact on Coyle and he does tell us a lot about how the world has changed and I think that's his key role in this text and he certainly allows Coyle to develop an understanding of what's happening in the world and how that world has changed. And we see this 
change in him we t he talks about and we read about when he's physically strong as a youngster and they're all in the finger club but all his friends of all those people in the finger club have died where they hang themselves up by one finger and survive we get a great description of him on page 84 and certainly you need to look at that if you're going to talk about Diddy. He helps Coyle out, he talks about him, he gives him background um, to the island, he gives him background to the way that the shipping works, he gives him a lot of background to how it's changed and he talks about his past life on the seas and, and what's changed over time. And he sees some of it as negative and some of it as positive but he's certainly accepting of it and we see that in in the dichotomy of the office that he runs, he certainly has the old handwritten ledger where everything's recorded very specifically, but he has the computer as well where the same information is kept, but he keeps the old ledger for when the power goes out and he's got an accurate record of what happens. And I think that that sense of adaptability and flexibility is very, very important in this navigating the global and understanding how people navigate the global. So there's that acceptance of dichotomy, if you wish. Um, he alerts Coil to the Hitler boat, which is a big turning point because it gives Coil certainly the opportunity to write something else other than just what comes in and comes out and certainly enhances his reputation in that way. Um, and that's, you find that on page 120 and when, in Hitler's boat and that's very important. I think Diddy's best and most great asset in the story as such is that he helps Coil learn about globalisation and, and, and the global through his stories of the changing ships. And you'll find that in chapter nine, The Mooring Hitch. And I think that chapter, if you're going to use Diddy and talk about Diddy in respect of uh, the idea of adapting to a changing world, that chapter is very, very important. I'd like now to talk about Partridge and Macalia. And <laughs> Partridge is a very interesting character. He's Coyle's first friend and certainly he meets him in the laundromat and he gets Coyle a job at the record which starts off his newspaper career which enables him to go out and move if you like to Newfoundland eventually because he does get a job on the gammy bird so it's very important and at that point in his life Coyle is extremely lonely okay he's he is desperately lonely and we talked about that in the very first lecture in this televised series he rewrites Coyle's content at the start to enable him to keep his job and he friend, he's friendly and he tries to teach him and he actually brings Coyle out into the world a little bit more and that's, that's very important for Coyle. He's much more worldly than Coyle and he certainly understands the world much better than his friend does. He and Michaelia are very adaptable. So for example, they move around a bit. Michaelia becomes a truck driver. She throws in her tertiary work. Um, and on page seven, we see how worldly he is. They move to California and they certainly get out and about and move around. What's important is that Coyle, he gets Coyle a job on the gammy bird and Coyle ma maintains touch with him, which is very interesting because in the past he's had no friends and he has uh, very little interaction with the world, but he, he and Partridge sort of maintain a very distant relationship and Partridge is sort of back in his old world and reports on incidents in the old world that make it very unique and interesting. So let's look at one of those incidents. We certainly see where life in California isn't much better for Coyle. Oh, sorry for Partridge, I apologise. He reveals news of the murders at the Mockingboard record in chapter 36 and certainly he brings the sense of that navigating the global can be lucky. Now the final characters I wish to talk about are Bayonet and Silver Melville and obviously that, that's a very big incident in the text with the Hitler boat and going out into the world and they interact of course with Aunt Agnes and, and many of the other characters and it's the murder part mystery and Coyle eventually finds all of Bayonet um, navigating the global which shows navigating the global can be difficult and complex but not always pleasant and he, he finds the head in, in the suitcase and it is a, called a gelatinous horror and their interaction, they might be rich, and she says she killed him for love as she runs off with the steward of the boat. So really, that's the end of our character rundown. Uh, that's the end of our series at this stage. And don't forget to look down and press the like button on your computer just below you. So thank you for your time. Don't forget, this is a Total Education production. You can find the website and the notes 
on the website, please visit us, help us out there. Thank you.